grateful to listen to the musical style of Oscar Maxwell III as he teaches figures one and ones of our hearts. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. James Presbyterian Church here on the corner of 141st Street and St. Nicholas Avenue in the village of Harlem in the city of New York. I'm Reverend Dr. Derek McQueen, and we are glad that you are with us today. We're welcoming you online. We're welcoming you on Facebook when I edit this later. We're welcoming all of you who are in the sanctuary, and we are just so grateful to be here today. So let us begin to worship God. And we will begin by starting our first psalm of the day, which is Psalm 148, 1 through 14. It's our psalm that we want to open up with our scriptures today and say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens and praise him from the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens. And you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Now praise the Lord from the earth. You sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind, and fulfilling his command, mountains and hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and the heavens. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. This is our opening psalm today, this first Sunday after Christmas, and I'm going to introduce you to our liturgist for the day, who is with us online, ruling elder Andrea Bradford. She will be guiding us through our liturgy online, and you have their bulletins, where you have all of those prayers, and also all of the lyrics to all of the hymns, if you would like as well. We have hymnals and Bibles in the pews as well. Ruling elder Andrea Bradford. Yes, yes, good morning, good morning. It is a beautiful day before the new year. And so we count our blessings that we have made it this, this far and that we are here to worship together on this last day of 2023. It's amazing how fast this year has gone by, but we are here and we are ready to jump over into 2024. And so we begin this New Year's Eve service with our call to worship. God's justice and righteousness are gifts for all the people of the world. The mountains and all of creation will yield prosperity, prosperity for, the people. for the people. With this bounty, God continually blesses. For this, we give thanks. These, These promised blessings, blessings of the Lord, Lord rest, rest on, on us, us like, like morning dew. Let us give thanksgiving unto God in worship. Yes. Yes. Let, Let us give praise for the promise that the righteousness of God will flourish, for the promise that peace will abound, and for the gifts of the dream. Let it be on earth as it is in heaven. Our opening hymn is O Come, O Ye Faithful. We ask if you are able to please stand and sing this hymn with us or this joyful Christmas carol.
adore him it's so nice to have a christmas carol some christmas carols because christ is born we commemorate that as we go into our our prayer of adoration and our adoration for our god as we express it this morning and continually our prayer says there is none like you you deserve the tributes of the leaders of nations. You deserve songs as gifts of praise. For this is how awesome you are. Yes. You I, redeem us I'm with so your good. love. And we live in the midst of this redemption and in the midst of this grace. Mm -hmm. We glory in the shadow of your brilliance <laughs> that warms our hearts and souls when the world seems cold. We glory in you. Amen. Amen. Our response to that adoration is, oh, how I love Jesus. That wonderful, what they say in the children's song. But I think it fits this Christmas as well. Amen. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, the name of Jesus. And we walk down the street and we say, oh, how I love Jesus. But sometimes we lose the name of Jesus in our, in our walk. And we have a chance to come back and say that we're sorry for moving off of that path. And so we have this time to come together in confession. Our call says we are passing into it a new age, bringing our hopes and dreams for the future. We also come bringing with us the many ways in which we have not followed God's will. So 
Let us confess those burdens now and leave them at the lowly manger. Let us pray together. We claim new beginnings at this time of the year. We make promises that we hope will make our lives better. Forgive us when we promise to shed unwanted habits and don't promise to take up the burdens of our brothers and sisters. Forgive us as we take pride in our past achievements without giving all the glory to you. Forgive us for thinking we can do it by ourselves and forgive us for not including you in our plan. Moving forward, help us to align our wills to your will, to our goals to your goals, to bring your love to bear in whatever we do. Help us to reimagine a more compassionate world post pandemic and make it so. Please help us to remember that just as you show with the birth of Jesus, you are always with us. Amen. Let us take a moment this New Year's Eve. Think about the changes that we want to make, that we may not make, but that God will still forgive us for bring us to God in prayer for just a moment in silence. I 
Behold the Lamb, the Lamb of God. God loves us. God sent God's Son for us. And God forgives us. We have that assurance of God's forgiveness. Patience and kindness are extended to us. Of this, we can be sure. God hears our prayers and has already extended unending grace and life-giving mercy, mm -hmm. calling out to us, be at peace, dear heart. We will walk together on this journey. Let us move into this year knowing that God's pardon mm -hmm. and God's peace is completely ours. May the praises continuously pour from our hearts as thanks for this grace and this mercy. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
again welcome to St. James Presbyterian Church here on the corner of 141st Street and St. Nicholas Avenue in this quaint little village that some people call Harlem in this little old place called New York City. We want to welcome you and thank you for being here and worshiping with us today. We welcome all of our guests who are visiting with us for the first time and we thank you for being here. We welcome all of you who are on Zoom who are visiting with us for the first time. We don't know who you are sometimes, but we know that you're out there and you stop me on the street and say, didn't you sing that song on that Zoom one day? So I want to give you thanks for that. And for those of you who will be watching on YouTube, when I edit this and put it up after the service, we welcome you as well. And we invite you to leave your comments and your chat and your prayer requests as well. First and foremost, I want to give thanks in our announcements and community life today. Um, I want to let you know that my brother, um, Aaron McQueen, and myself, Derek McQueen, humbly give thanks to St. James Presbyterian Church for your support, love, and prayers as we celebrated the life of my mom, Priscilla McQueen, yesterday in her, her going home service. Your presence, some of you were there physically, both physical and online, gave such a great embrace of the Spirit, so I thank you for that. But keep us in, our, in your prayers and our family and friends in your prayers as well, because we know grief is not a one-time thing. It's an ongoing thing that you hold on to and you walk with. But it was a beautiful service, and I'm grateful for all of you as well. On that note, I also want to share some information I received this morning um, via a text. I had a couple of text things happen this morning before we should do them. And the first is that um, the patriarch of the family uh, the Brown family, Matthew Brown, has passed away this morning. Ooh. And so he had been, um, we knew that he was going to be home in the hospital, but um, we went on home today, and I received that text. So keep the Brown family in prayer. We know that there are generations of Browns that are members of this family, and we know that they are in mourning right now and grieving, but especially pray for Mother Alma Brown. When you've been married to a man as long as she has, and you've been so much a part of the community, we you know what a loss this is. So let us keep them in our prayers as well and celebrate his life as it comes forward and comes to us in these next few weeks as well. Also, I wanted to let you know that the Church of the Master, one of our sister Presbyterian churches in Harlem, will have a watch night service tonight <laughs> at, this, at 10 30 p.m. and the Zoom information is in there. If you don't know what watch night is, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> In 1865, we realized that the Emancipation Proclamation would go forward at, on December 31st, when the clock struck 12, that slaves would be free. Mm -hmm. In 1863, 1865, five, five. and we, they knew that the slaves would be free. And so they waited and watched and prayed that the nation didn't change their mind. <laughs> and they prayed and they ate black eyed peas for good luck and collard greens for good luck. And they prayed and they watched. And when the clock struck 12, they gave thanks to God. So a tradition has opened up that every New Year's Eve, many African American communities gather in church on New Year's Eve and so that they can spend their New Year's Eve praying as it comes in and thanking God for freedom, for life, for liberty, for grace, for love, and for mercy. And so, Church of the Masters, our church that is going to represent us with that today. So you're more than welcome to join that as well. Thanks be to God. And some of you will be in Times Square. I pray that you will be warm out there today. My one tip for you is to go to the bathroom before you go because they don't let you out. So whatever you do, make sure that you take care of yourself and you stay warm in different ways out there in Times Square as you're watching the ball drop and enjoy yourselves with in moderation. <laughs> and even though it's New Year's Day, tomorrow there will be Bible study online. You know I record that anyway, and we'll put it online on our YouTube channel on Tuesday. So if you don't join because you're resting um, tomorrow, um, I understand that completely, but your information is there in the bulletin as well. Um, the Presbyterian women will be starting a book club beginning in January. They'll be meeting the first Wednesday of the month from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Um, via Zoom. And the ruling elder Andrea Bradford, who is our liturgist, will be leading that Bible study with a particular emphasis on women in the Bible. 
which you know I'm very, very, very familiar with, and I love preaching on and teaching on that as well. Are there any other announcements for the good of the class that you can think of? Because I know that I'm a little forgetful today, so. Can I make an announcement? Anthony would like to make an announcement. Yes, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, the past few weeks, I have been married my wife has been very ill. But I gotta tell you, I had to uh, that the support, even though I was not here, I was in contact with Pastor, right? that it was very, very important because it got me through. Yes. And it's getting me through because it's actually it's not in the woods yet. Uh, but I gotta tell you, this is really the home, away from home. So if you have problems, you can come in. Rick, you pointed this out to me a couple months ago, didn't you? Didn't you? But if you have problems with your, with your other half, and you're worried and all that, you think about St. James, and you'll get through, you'll wake up. Come to church. Okay? Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Welcome. For those of you who are at home who may not have heard Anthony, he is saying that you know his wife is still um, not feeling well, and she's not out of the woods yet, but he hasn't been to church for a few weeks. But he knew that his church family was there with him. He's been in contact with several of us, and he's encouraging people to come to church and be a part of community right. because it, it matters for you when you're not here. So we give thanks to God for that. And we can give thanks for that. We can give thanks for Chris Bozel's computer being loaned to him from Drew University where they fixed it. So he's back on Zoom with us as well. We thank Oscar for picking him up. We thank our bulletin folders. We thank our Zoom technicians over here. And if any of you who are visiting with us for the first time, if one of you or all of you want to stand up, and just say where you're from and yeah. maybe for why you're here. We welcome you to do so. So stand up and tell us where you're from, or stand up and tell us where you're from. <laughs> from Brent, well, we have you. Welcome, welcome. How about you two? Oh, we come from French too. Oh, yeah, we do. <laughs> the funny thing about both being from France. When I go away and people say, oh, you're from New York. Do you know this person from New York? <laughs> I'm not going to ask if you two know one another. <laughs> but we are all uh, beautiful, divine children of God. And we welcome you here. And we're so grateful that you're with us today. So thank you for being with us. And I also do want to keep let you know that even though my mom's no longer with us physically, her spirit is. And she will be with us because I'm keeping the section in the bulletin from my mom to you. Right. So in the bulletin, you'll see from Miles Monroe, understanding your potential, discovering the hidden you. The saying is, you must decide if you're going to rob the world or bless it with the rich, valuable, potent, untapped resources locked away within you. Sweet. So will you rob the world of you or will you bless the world with you? Mm. You must decide that. So thanks be to God for that. I think we're ready to move on, ruling out Dr. Jerry Bradford. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, it's such a wonderful time to share these, these moments of the community. And so let's let's just uh, stand those of you who are in the sanctuary and those of us online and share some love with one another through the this peace of christ the fulfillment of god's promise foretold the peace of christ to all the world and so i say unto you the peace of christ be with you and also, also with, with you, you. You are encouraged to get up and say peace of Christ and also with you to one another here in the room. Peace of Christ to everyone and a happy new year. Uh, peace to you too, Ms. Riley. Thank you. Peace to everyone. Peace to everyone. Peace to everyone. Christ. Peace to everyone. Christ. 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 Christ.
Thank you. Hi.
<laughs> so we are grateful for all good things and even some of the bad things because it brings us together. So thanks be to God. I also wanted to let you know, I want to give a big old thank you to, uh, to Thelma for driving back and forth to Cape May, New Jersey yesterday. It's a two and a half hour drive and she transported Oscar and Sevilla down to my mom's memorial, my mom's funeral service. And Robert Fultz Morrison came from New York City as well as our state clerk. Um, so New York City Presbyterian was represented as well. So we are grateful and we fly. I just wanted to give an, an official thank you for that as well. And thank you, and I know that some of you were online and it was just really wonderful. But now, let us move forward in our worship service. And we will have our prayer of illumination led by moving of Andrea Bradford, which is printed in your bulletin in bold that we can all read out loud together. Moving of Andrea Bradford. Yes, yes, a wonderful time. I just wanted to say that the, the service yesterday for Priscilla McQueen, uh, our pastor did an amazing eulogy and talked about Priscilla in the Bible. And we have to remember that we are all connected. And so I just wanted to say that it was just such a moving service. And Pastor, it was just wonderful to see you uh, send your mother home. Yeah. And so God bless you and the family as you continue through this journey and uh, you and your brother as you pull together. Yeah. And so let us move on now in our pull together in the praise of our God through our scripture and hearing and reading of the word. We have this prayer of illumination. If we could say it together. Your word. <laughs> Is a lamp unto our feet and, and a beacon of light, light to guide our way. way. Like the star in the east on Christmas morning, may our reading of your word today bring us ever closer to you. Amen. Amen. We have three scriptural passages this morning. The first is from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah, the 61st chapter beginning at verse 10 and going to the 62nd chapter, verse 3, Isaiah 61. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as the bridegroom decks himself with a garland as, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nation shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in your hand of your God. And from the book of Galatians, our second reading, the fourth chapter, verses four through seven, Galatians in the New Testament, the fourth chapter, Verses four through seven. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son. Born of a woman. Born under the law. In order to redeem those who were under the law. So that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, 
but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. And our gospel reading from the second chapter of Luke, the 22nd through the 40th verses. Luke, the second chapter, verses 22 through 40. When the time came for their purification, mm -hmm. according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout looking forward to the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child, Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, mm -hmm. Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after their marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Ruling Elder Andre Bracker, for reading this scripture so beautifully and so insightfully to our hearts and spirits. Now is the moment in our worship service where we say, let the children come. Um, and we know that you're out there online. And I just have a big question for young people around the world and online and wherever you are. My question is this. Do you know you are amazing? Do you know you are amazing? In the scripture today, Mary and Joseph do what they're supposed to do. They take Jesus to the temple. They say it's for purification or what they need to be holy, made holy, but Jesus has to get a little operation. And then he is sort of dedicated to being the first son of the family. But 
That's the normal thing that happens every single time a male heir happens to be born that's close enough to get to the temple. But if you want to show that slide of the tree and the flower and look in your bulletin, this is a magnolia flower and a magnolia tree. The magnolia flower, which when you ride through Mississippi in the springtime, you open your windows and it wafts through your entire being. It's such a beautiful smell. We have several of them in New York City on Broadway of the Upper West Side as well. But very often, like Mary and Joseph, we look at our beautiful blossoms which are our young people. They're like blossoms of flowers, and we take care of them, and we nurture them, and we coo and love on them. And we know that they're special, and we know that they're pretty cool. But what happens when another person comes along the way and sees the potential of what your child actually is? Because you're so busy tending and, and leading and doing all the other stuff. Magnolia trees are some of the most majestic as you see here. This tree is in Central Park on Fifth Avenue. There's a little conservatory around 100th Street. And you all can go there in the spring and see these trees and see what I'm talking about. But you all are like a flower, and you're wonderful, and you're fragrant, and you bring us joy. But I want you to know how amazing you really are. You're not just a little flower. Your potential is to be this large magnolia tree, making a difference to all the world, and bringing joy to all the people that walk by you. That's what you do as young people. You are more than a flower. You are the hope. You are the outgrowth of all of our dreams and care. And that makes you pretty amazing. I don't want you to ever, ever think, well, I'm just a little person that's doing my business. I'm just in my school. I don't really matter that much. I'm like everybody else. No, you're pretty amazing because you have the potential to grow and be this magnolia tree. The flower smells beautiful in your hands, but the tree, the magnolia tree, makes the entire countryside fragrant, beautiful, lazy, rich, and full. You are the potential of that tree. You are amazing. And I just want you young people to know, like Mary and Joseph, I figure out after they had these two people look at their baby, said, oh, he's the Messiah. Oh, I know who this child is. I know they're telling you about it. Mary and Joseph were in wonder because as much as they had been having a baby in a manger, hearing that they would have to leave and go to Egypt and still have to do all this other stuff, they recognized finally completely that Jesus was pretty amazing. And every parent and every child has the capacity to be that amazing. So that's why I asked, did you know? Did you know that you are amazing? If you don't know it now, you are amazing. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of the flowers of our young people. And we are grateful that they are connected and grounded to the branch that they will grow and that they will be a thing of beauty and joy in this world. 
Help us to care for one another so that they can grow strong. So that when they look at themselves, they don't need me to tell them. They can say, you know what? I'm amazing because God made me amazing. So we thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. Down at the main
scripture. Lord, now I have seen thy salvation. Our sermon meditation today is entitled Knowing When It Comes. Yes, I have to make sure. Knowing When It Comes. Simeon and Anna. Two seniors who are ready almost to become ancestors. They are elders ready to become ancestors that come to see the child. Let me explain why that's important in terms of African tribal understanding of relationships of people. The ancestors are in the realm of the divine holding wisdom and knowledge, holding love and embracing all of us with the best intentions, like my mom is right now. An ancestor on our shoulder, wishing us the best. The elders are those who are grown in their wisdom and knowledge on earth, who are very close to the ancestors. And as the elders get older, they start to hear the wisdom of the ancestors a bit more. But those who have the most intimate knowledge of the ancestors and the divine are babies. Because they come immediately from that same realm. Their spirits have been hanging out with the ancestors. So it makes sense in this text, when you look at it from an African perspective, an African tribal perspective, it makes sense that these elders have been told by the divine that the child, the Messiah, is here. And they see this baby and automatically the wisdom of the child that beams from Jesus speaks to them. Simeon has been waiting his entire life. His entire life for a Messiah to come. We've talked about this historically and academically where we know that the Messiah is supposed to be one that is going to break the bonds of oppression for the people of Israel who are now suffering under Rome. This king is supposed to come and be an emissary for God to set them free, finally. Simeon has been waiting for the son. And most people have been waiting for someone to come in on a horse, to come in with troops ready to fight and go to war with Rome. Simeon has been waiting for this kind of person to come, and all of a sudden the spirit comes to him and says, go to the temple and you will see. And Simeon walks in and sees the child, takes the child from his mother's arms, and says this blessing, knowing that this 
is the Messiah. He knew it when the Messiah came. It wasn't what he was expecting, but he knew it. And then we have Adam. Anna married for seven years. A widow now, and she's 84. So let's try and do some math. What's 84 minus 14? That's 70. So for about 70 years, she has been a widow. A widow without a man without anybody taking care of her, but she has been defiant and she has walked to the temple to praise God on her own all the time. She is sure of herself. And she walks into the temple and she sees this child and knows. Now she wasn't waiting to die like Simeon. Because Simeon said, now I can die. I've seen the Messiah. She does something that I think is pretty amazing. This 84-year-old sees this child, sees this Messiah, picks up her skirt, and runs out into the street and says, it's, it's now. He's here. I got some good news for you. So Anna becomes the first evangelist in our New Testament. An 84-year-old woman sees Jesus and runs out into the street and says the good news of the gospel that Jesus Christ is here. 84 years old, she starts telling the good news of the gospel. I love me some Anna in this text. Anna knew it when she saw it. This is quite the opposite of our human experience. How often do we look for our miracle and it passes us by and we don't recognize it? How often do we make grand plans and expect for something wonderful to happen and it doesn't happen, and we spend our time being angry, sometimes even angry at God, who can handle it, that we didn't get what we wanted, we didn't get what we worked for, it didn't come in our time, it didn't come in our space. It's very, very hard to think that we go through our lives knowing that there's something good out there for us and being impatient, giving up on our hopes and dreams. But here's what I want us to get from this particular text today. God prepares us for our miracles. God prepares us for our blessing. And remember when you pray for a miracle and you pray for a blessing, it's not your blessing, it's God's blessing on you. It's God's miracle on you. you all you can do is lift up the petition. You can't design it, you can't orchestrate it. It is God's blessing for you. All we have to do is open ourselves and say, whatever it is that you have for me, Make me ready for your blessing. Make me ready for your miracle. That is the prayer. Make us ready to be able to handle what it is, to be able to know what it is when I see it, to be able to rejoice in it when I see it, to be able to run out into the street and say, yes, here is the miracle and here is the good news. I got something to share with you. This is what we're talking about, getting ourselves ready so that we'll know it when we see it. It's even like love. How often do you think about your first love? How often do you think about your favorite food? And then only to find years later that first love is a dream. That first food you no longer have a taste for. 
but something else has replaced it that is making you feel even more full. In terms of love relationships, it's not that butterflies in your stomach all the time, but it's the union that you feel with someone's spirit. This is what I've been looking for. I know that come midnight tonight, the first thing I'm going to eat is black eyed peas. Which, by the way, we do as African Americans because it's good luck. I thought for a while that pancakes were my favorite food. I even claimed that the birthmark that I had on my thigh was a pancake when I was a little kid. But now I look at this birthmark and it's got a little black eye on it. My favorite food, black eyed peas. And it's so good for you, so healthy for you. And I never even knew it. It is the perfect food for me on this New Year's Eve. Not just because it's good luck, but for once I'm eating something that's actually good for me that I can eat as much of as I want. It has a different purpose for me, and now I know it. Because I know more about my body, I know more about my needs. Now I know the things that I like when I see it. Because God has given me more wisdom to be able to say, this is what I need for you. You understand what I'm saying about why it's important to ask God to make you ready? So that you'll know it when you see it. We so often would go to the temple like Anna and walk past this traveling pair with the baby and say, can you move out of my way? I got some praying to do. Churches are like that. We do that, but we are called to stop and see how God is calling us to be in conversation with someone who's sitting next to us. That's why we do the peace of Christ. So we have an opportunity to know a blessing when we see it. We are called to always be ready for God's blessing and God's miracle. Because what God has for us just like our young people. Pretty amazing. Rethink what it means to say I'm just going to live my life and try and figure out how to get what I want. And to say I'm just going to live my life and get what God wants for me. Rewire yourself to be ready. Anna was running, running around for 70 years. Simeon was ready to die. But it finally heard the clarion call from God saying, I have what you've been waiting for. How many people did Anna bless? even before she got the good news. An 84-year-old woman in the first century, living alone and being a widow is quite a miracle, so she gave hope to a lot of people. Simeon's faith, knowing that God made this promise, how many people did he give hope to? even before he saw Jesus. People who were thinking that there was no hope in the world, he gave hope. When we prepare ourselves to be ready to see and to know what God has for us when God brings it, what we don't know is that there are people watching us 
learning from us, getting good news from us, getting faith for their own lives from us, just because we're waiting. And just because we have the faith that God will do what God said God's going to do, which is to bring your grace and your mercy. And in this particular case, it just happened to be in the form of a baby that was going to save the world. Mm. The little things that God will do Just ask God, make me ready to know it when I see it. And write me back at pastor141 at horizon.net and tell me what God has wrought in your life. Because I promise you, promise, a holy promise. You humble yourself before God and it will happen. Thanks be to God. Holy God, we thank you for this gift of humility of Simeon and Anna, Anna and Simeon, of always being underneath the faith of your promise knowing that you would take care of them and deliver what you said you would deliver. This Christmas, when we realize that this lesson for us to sit back and make ourselves ready is one of the most blessed Christmas gifts that this season can give us. Make us ready, O oh God. The world needs us to be ready to share good news of love, peace, justice. So many of the things the world doesn't know, even when it's right in front of their face. They don't know that we need love, justice, and peace. Otherwise, why would there be so much war, hatred, and oppression? Make us ready 